Hello and welcome back. Here's another interesting shape that we're going to create and this time we'll be using AutoCAD. So if this is one of those gateway programs that'll help you succeed in just drawing about anything. When we're looking at a part like this the first thing I like to do is kind of look around and always figure out where's a good start point at. And I think in this case our best start point is going to be this back line. right? So we're going to start here and then we're going to progress our way this way. And that should be able to get us everything we need. Uh, one other quick scan is just to look over the drawing and making sure that everything is correct. And that I don't have any missing dimensions or I'm going to have any problems. One other little area that you might see of concern is going to be this slot here in the beginning, right? So we know that we can figure out this line. But it's going to be trying to figure out, you know, the thickness here. And I'll show you how to do that when we approach it. So... Let's not worry about this right now. Let's jump on over to AutoCAD and get started. So here in AutoCAD, before I get started, the first thing I do is usually I turn off my grid. And that's just by selecting this icon here. The next thing I usually do is put ortho on since most of the stuff is going to be orthogonal. And then from this point I should be about ready to start drafting. I see that my units are already set to decimal so I don't have to worry about that. Start with the line command. I'll click here and I'm going to go straight up in the air. 130. Alright. So at this point it kind of flies off my screen. What I tend to do is I hit the escape button. And then I'll double click the middle mouse button, or you can select this icon here just to zoom the extents. And then I'm just going to scroll backwards on my mouse. So I'm using that middle scroll wheel on your mouse. Go ahead and use the line command again. And now I'm just going to select this endpoint. I'm going to go this direction. 150. Then I have an angle line here that needs to go up. So I'm going to type in 100. And then I'll use the less than symbol on my keyboard to represent an angle. So it's going 100 angle and it is going 30 degrees. So once I type that in I got 100 angle 30 degrees. And this line I know it says that it's 65. It may be 65, it may be something close to it. But I'm going to go ahead and type it in a 65 right now and hopefully that falls in line whenever I create the arc on the outside. Alright, so I have half of this done. So what I'm going to do is just mirror this across to the other side, right? So I'm just going to pan this up a little bit. Let's go ahead and use the mirror command. And I'm clicking here, so one click this way, and I'm going to come to the, to the left here, and then I'll do one click here. Remember the green crossing window means everything that it touches and is selected will be selected. Alright, so I got that as my mirror options. Go ahead and hit the enter button. Select the midpoint of this line. And then luckily my ortho is on, that means I just go straight this direction and then do a left click and hit enter. I don't want to erase the source in this case. Let's go ahead and put our circle that's located on the back of this. So I'll use a circle center radius. I'll go ahead and place this circle. And then I'm going to type in the radius of this one, which will be 20. Alright, so one neat thing that I see here is that I see that I have a dimension of 20 here. Well, the radius of my next circle is going to be 20. So that radius on this outside circle is 20. And then I have another circle that has a radius of 20. So that's really beneficial to me is that I can use this circle and just copy it here and then copy it here. And that should be what I need to create those two circles. So just like I said, I'm just going to use the copy command, which is here. Go ahead and select your circle. Enter. Pick a base point. Now, since I'm moving at a distance, I don't have to pick a base point close to my circle. I'll click here. As long as I'm aiming this direction, I'll type in the distances at the bottom, which the first one is 90. And then I have to add those two numbers together. So I have a 90 plus a 100. And that's easy enough math for us to do in our head. That's 190. Go ahead and hit enter. And then escape from here. So now I have all of the circles that I'm going to need to create the other one. All right. Next, let's go ahead and draw a line. And I'm going to start at this quadrant. Now, if quadrant is not on on yours, make sure you select this fly up next to it. And I have a check next to quadrant. So 
Like I say, these are some of the typical O snaps that I like to have running on my machine. You may find that, you know, you might want a few more or a few less. So I'm just going to draw a line from this quadrant to this quadrant. I'll go escape, and then I'm just going to do the line command again. And go from this quadrant to this quadrant. All right, so now I'm ready to start trimming some things. Let's use the trim command here. And then let's go and trim off these portions of our arcs that we have. And I'm also going to trim off that portion of that line. Okay. All right. Now I'm done with that. I'm going to take an advantage of this being one unit. And what I mean by that is that I'm going to make this into a polyline. So that way I don't have to redo the stuff on the inside to create the other one. But we are going to have to do just a little bit of math to figure that out. So before the numbers that I got off the bottom here was this number here and then this number, right? So I used both of those numbers to give me that 190. So I have these two numbers. To figure this out, how far this offset is on the inside of this, I have a radius of 20. And then I also have a radius of 16. So whatever 20 minus 16 is, that should give me that number. Now, keep in mind that we're dealing with radial dimensions. If these were diameters, for example, whatever number you're going to get, you got to divide that number by 2. Okay? So that's one of those little sneaky rules here about AutoCAD or about drafting just in general is that the diameter, if I'm going to use that and I'm trying to figure out the offset, I have to divide that number by 2. But since this is going to be radius dimensions, it's the straight subtraction from it. So it's just simply 20 minus the 16. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, is just going to highlight this. So remember, I'm just going to use a blue crossing window. I'll do one left click here, drag along this direction, one left click. Once I have all of this selected, I'm going to go to the Modify tab, and then I'll select Join. What that's going to do is just take all four of those components and make it into one polyline. And if you're looking on your command line, you can see that AutoCAD does say that. All right, so with that done, now I'm going to use the Offset command. And that math that we figured out before, the 20 minus the 16, is nothing more than 4. So when I select Offset, it always asks for a distance first. I put in a distance of 4. Now I can select this slot. And make sure that you move your cursor to the inside and do one more left click. And then there you have that. Alright, now I'm ready to start creating the objects that are out here. If you notice that back in the drawing, everything is pulling from this center. So that's why I said in the beginning, I have to start this way and kind of progress my way forward because this is kind of the nucleus of everything, right? We could have started here and kind of worked our way backwards, but we'd have kind of got into a little bit more difficult, but it can be done. But now that I have this, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create this circle here and then this circle. So I'm going to create both of those circles. And like I said before, this dimension here, I'm hoping it does actually hit at that point usually with numbers of this nature I got a strange feeling that it may not be exactly at that point and I'll show you what I mean when I get there we're gonna also figure out how to create this slot on the end of this so this is gonna be kinda nice little tricky stuff here that we can get into and I really hate to call it tricky but it's just some cool little drafting principle another thing that I wanna take note of is that I have a radius that's on the outside of my slot here so that radius is going to come into play. All right. If you're looking for using all of these numbers, you'll see that these two numbers are really not used in this one. Because when we built this, it actually creates this. All this is doing is verifying that we can use the mirror command to create the bottom. Likewise with these two numbers here in the back, right? So this does tell me the placement to put that circle directly in the middle of here. All right. Let's jump back over to AutoCAD and we should be able to finish this up now. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw a big circle here. So I'm just going to use a circle center radius. I'll start at this center. So I'm going to click that center, and then I'll type in the radius of my circle. And on this one, it's going to be 160. All right, now this is what I was meaning to check beforehand, is that if I zoom into here, something tells me that that 65 is not quite 65, right? So you can see that it is off just slightly. We can either accept that, or we can try to do some things to make it, you know, the same. We got a different 
arcs and things of that nature that we can use. And let's see, the one that I'm thinking about in particular is that we can use a start in radius one. Now, if I use this one, I have to keep in mind that my center will not exactly be at the center of my circle here. So I think I'll try that just to keep everything accurate on this drawing. So I'm just going to delete this circle. I'm going to go to the arc command. I'm going to choose start in radius. Remember that when we're creating arcs, we have to think in a counterclockwise rotation, right? So therefore, I'm going to start here. And I'm thinking counterclockwise, right? This is where I'm going to end at. And now I have to give it the radius. Our radius is 160. Go ahead and hit the enter button and you will see that it will create that. Now like I was saying, if I click here, and if I come down to my slot and I click here, I should get another plus somewhere. Um, and it's not showing up. Uh, I can actually put a plus symbol on here. And I'm going to use a old command called DCE. And that just stands for diameter symbol. Right? I can click here. And now you see I do get that point. And if I click my arc here, I'm just going to kind of scroll into it. And you can see that there is a difference between them. All right, so just kind of keep that in mind is that when I'm creating these, it, it kind of depends, and you can see there's a little bit of manipulation going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and create now our slot circle here, and this is what we're going to have to make sure we be careful with, is that I'll start off with a circle center radius, and this one I do want at the origin of this circle, so at the center of this circle. Now, you can see that as I'm getting close to this, I'm getting perpendiculars and everything else that's going to appear. I'm going to hold down the shift button and right click and choose center. And what that's going to allow me to do is click just on the outside here. So once I click this center, now I can type in the radius. And the radius of this one is going to be 110. All right. So now that slot, I have a radius at the bottom. What that radius tells me is that that's nothing more than the offset of that slot. So I'm just going to use the offset command. I'll type in 20. I'm going to select my circle here. I'm going to click one time onto the inside. I'm going to go back and select this circle and then click to the outside. Next, I'm going to draw a line from this center and then it's going to be at this angle, right? I don't know quite the distance of how long I need to go. I just know that I need to create a circle, I mean a line from this center out this direction. It can cross or it can't cross. In this case, I'm going to make sure that it does not cross just so I can show you something else that you can use. So I'm going to start with the line command. Like I did before, I'm going to shift and right click and choose center. I'm going to select the center, which is located here. And now I know that that line is going up at a 45 degree, right? So let's go ahead and make a short line, just 50, angle 45, right? I know that when I type this number in, it's going to be short on purpose. So I'm doing this on purpose. I could have used a construction line to make sure that it runs right across there. But I want to show you that you can use some other options that if you have a line that's short here, that I can create that circle here. Let's go to circle, center radius. And now this is where when I locate the center of my circle, I'll shift and right click and I'm going to choose the intersection option. And then I'm just going to click on this line. And then I'll click on this circle. And now you're going to see that that, I'm sorry, on that arc. Now you're going to see that my circle should appear where the intersection of those two will be. I'm just going to type in 20. Okay. Let's go ahead and scroll out. And I'll go ahead and get rid of that line now. Go back to the mirror command. Select this circle. Enter. I can pick any line or any point that's kind of going right down the middle here. So I'll pick this midpoint, just kind of come this direction and do a left click, hit enter because I don't want to erase the source. Let's go ahead and get rid of this line now that we have everything situated to where it needs to be. I'm going to go to the trim command. And this time I'm going to use a cutting edge. So I'm going to use this option on the command line. I'm going to select these two circles and then these two circles. Go ahead and hit enter. And what this is going to allow me to do is so I don't have to trim through all of the rest of this stuff. I'm just going to trim here and then here. And I'll trim off the portions here and here. Okay. Go ahead and hit the escape button. 
And now that should be it totally completed except for we got to put our fillets on the back. And I just looked around the back and I see that we do have corners there. So let's go to the fillet command. Let's choose our radius. Let's make that radius 20. Enter. And we do have more than one, so I will select multiple. And then I'm just going to select the two lines that I want to make that fillet with. And I'm going to do it here as well. And now I'm just kind of giving it a quick glance over and I don't see anything else that pops out to me. And it looks like we are complete with this one. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more ones and keep liking and subscribing. I, I do appreciate it and it helps me bring more and more content to you. So until we get to the next video, thank you for watching.